So in this video what we're going to do is um, basically disassemble this lever which is the M7, no it's not, it's the M675 have to check that one, get confused with all the Shimano numbers but yeah, M675 is very similar to the Dior version which is the M615 and then the XT version is the M785 and the M785 has like the chrome bit here I see a lot of the M785 still, I think they come out probably around 2010 something like that and uh, this one as far as I know works well, the difference is I'm not too sure. I know on the Dior one, it probably doesn't have this. So this is a tool free adjuster. So there isn't a huge amount of difference between like Dior SLX and XT levers of this era. Um, yeah, so what we'll do is we will take this top reservoir cap off, which is a T10 Torx for this little bolt here. And then the other one takes an Allen key, which is your bleed port screw. So whenever you want to bleed your brakes, you screw your funnel into the Shimano funnel or whatever funnel you've got, easy bleed kit, stuff like that. Right, so that's loose. Chop that over there, little bolt. So we're gonna... Shouldn't really be that hard to undo this. You don't need to tie them. They do have a little washer, well not a washer, but a, an O-ring on them. And this one actually doesn't. So if we look there. There's no O-ring on this, so this one probably would end up leaking if we didn't get a replacement o-ring and then what happens is this little plate will come off now and then reveal the rest of it so yeah um, back to the T10 Torx on this little screw here and then normally underneath this plate this should be like a white plastic uh, kind of guide really for the rubber it kind of helps the rubber sit in place there's another screw removed and then there is a little kind of nylon bushing on the end here, so just be a bit wary of that. You could end up uh, losing that if you're not careful. And then this metal plate comes off. Often what happens, like this one, they do get a little bit bowed, and that can also lead to them leaking as well. So I think, yeah, that's just a piece of aluminium, I believe. So yeah, we're going to put that over there. And there is your kind of rubber diaphragm, but also with a plastic insert is that bit there and I guess that just keeps the shape of the rubber a little bit better so it doesn't kind of fold inwards and then when you take this off just be aware on this edge that you could get snagged on two of these kind of holes here and then that's that and then what you can see in the lever is you have one big port and then there's three little ones and from what I can work out with working on these brakes the big port tends to work when you're pushing fluid down so when you squeeze the lever and if you imagine when you let go of the lever, you create vacuum, and that sucks back through that way. So if you have a problem actually passing fluid or pushing fluid back in, so say you wanted to push your pistons back in on your caliper, that would require fluid to come back into the lever and to fill up this area a little bit more. Um, if you have a lot of trouble with that, it could be that the ports are blocked. So yeah, it's always worth checking those before you throw things away, I guess, on the end standard 8mm compression clamp system and then when we look down there all pretty standard stuff so yeah that's that if you want to there's a kind of ball bearing system normally on these yeah so there's a little hole there as well and if you essentially push down on that hole you can open this up fully if the bolt wasn't in the way this bolt's pretty tight so we'll just leave that in for now and then what we're going to get on is how to remove this pivot so we can disconnect the lever and then get into all of this kind of area. Yeah, so on these levers, they tend to have like a little uh, rubber plug in this hole that we can see right here. And this can be a bit of a bugger to remove that. But ultimately what that's going to do is stop us from removing this pivot. Because essentially it's like a bolt that's screwed in there and then that clamps against that pivot so just trying to get that out with this tool we go we've got the edge up now so hopefully we'll be able to get the rest of it out there we go <laughs> so we lost that there we go here is a tiny, oh 
lost it again. There we go. It's a tiny little rubber plug that they put in there. And what that will do is expose that there is an Allen key slot. Or there's an Allen key inside that slot. And it's a bit smaller than that. So it's going to be a 2mm Allen key, which I do have somewhere. There we go. So here's this one, 2mm. We're just going to back that off. So we're going to turn it anti-clockwise. And what you'll have in there should be like a little grub screw. So that's out, but it's just turning. And there's your little kind of grub screw there. Put that to the side. And then what that means is that you now have the ability to push uh, this pivot system through. I don't think it matters if you push top to bottom, whatever you find easier. I just want to work it a bit back and forth. It definitely seems happier to be pushed from the top on this one. So maybe if I measure it, you might be able to see if it's tapered. Um, and the other thing I'll use is a bit of wood with a hole in. And then we can slot that into that hole. And then we can tap this through. Got a hammer somewhere. Ah, there we go, over here. So we're just going to tap that on there, and it comes out easy. I couldn't, I couldn't pull it, but with a little tap, it come out pretty easy. And just be aware you're going to have springs and stuff now, but we'll be able to put that back together. So there's your pivot, as you can see, lovely and clean. All we have is a lever a little screw that would probably oil that up as well or at least put some grease on it we've got this which is like um it stops the lever flopping around so it's like a tension spring and then we have this which is what i would probably call a cam system and if we get that and we've spread that through there you can see with that when you put that grub screw into there and tighten it they would basically lock this pivot in place so yep and then what you have is this kind of another kind of rollable cam system so yeah, this is probably a little bit more tricky at this stage. So we're just going to grab our... Well, we probably wouldn't need that actually, to see if we can push it. So what we're going to do is push down on the piston. And then at the same time we're going to push forward. We need to kind of remove that from that area. There we go. So as long as you kind of twist it, or able to twist it 90 degrees, you'll get that out quite easy. Seems another, seems to spin all right. Looks okay. Probably clean up quite well. Um, and then we're going to take these kind of plastic guides, I guess you could call them off. All right, let me just see if I can push that out. So inside there's these kind of bits here where that this cam system sits into. So we're just going to try and push them out of the way. There we go, there's one. Right there. And then the same on the other side. I can actually use this big hole, I believe. Yeah. Push a bit there. And a little bit there. Just remember they're only plastic, so they're not going to be massive massively strong and this one looks a little bit chewed up on the edge it looks like the edge is folded a little bit so it might be a bit of an issue I'm just going to get a little flat end underneath don't really want to create a burr on there or twist up the ends Have we got that there we go pull that through and then you've got your two little guides and that's your kind of system for your cam and it just sits and it kind of moves up in that little groove there so we put them over there and then what you're left with is um, your free stroke adjustment screw which I don't think you can adjust I don't know why this one's like that I think normally they have a proper screw there 
this one's just got two little holes. So yeah, I'm just going to have to leave that out. Just want to push it like down and forward because the little lug's going to get stuck in there. What I really need to do is undo this, but it's a very unusual little screw there. I'm going to use a set of uh, pliers there. So I've got these little circuit, circuit pliers might actually fit into this hole. And if it isn't seized, it should allow me to turn it. There we go. So yeah, that's kind of weird. I know on the, I think on the XT one they do give you a Phillips head on there. Just so you can adjust that. But that should be enough to remove this. And there's your little bar there we'll go through all this when we put it back together and already uh, your piston has started to come out you might be able to grab it if not just get a small allen key just push it in the end and just be aware that you don't want to scratch the inside and as we do that you should get your piston come out there should also be a spring in there here we go and then essentially if I get all this crap out of the way that is your lever Basically empty, and then what you want to do is just clean down there, spray some uh, alcohol spray, maybe use a cotton bud, because this lever is very, um, it's obviously quite dirty, so I don't want any of that going down into there, so that's what I'm going to do, I'm just going to clean that up. Um, as for the piston, ah, so these ones are a little bit different, on some of the other ones the spring actually clips onto there. And that's why the spring wasn't attached, so it just ultimately sits inside the barrel or the master cylinder like that. Just gonna give that a little clean. Oops, there we go, get that in shot. There we go, and that's your uh, 675 piston. This one probably could do with having the pistons changed, but you can see there, it's like a ripple. Looks like part of the rubber's damaged there, so I'd probably advise that you change that one. But here are the others, apart from being dirty, don't look too bad. I don't know what's on them, they shouldn't really, it's probably just dirt off my hands, but yeah, they're like, um, it's like a copper greasy kind of stuff all on it. So yeah, a lot of the crap must have got to this area. But yeah, what we'll do is we'll clean that up. I think it should be alright. If the damage was further to the end of the seal, then I would have personally replaced it. If I was going to use it, I would replace it. But ultimately, what will happen is I'll just rebuild it. And it will just go into a box. And then ultimately, that will go onto eBay and be sold as a spares repair job lot at some stage. With a load of other stuff. So for this purpose, I'll just rebuild it. So there you go, it's quite um, quite a lot of components really to the lever, when you look at some of the other stuff anyway, um, Hope stuff, probably potentially like half the amount of stuff, which always makes your life a little bit easier. Um, I did do a SRAM level recently, and that had next to no parts really, so yeah, quite a lot. Yeah, I just wanted to go over this um, lever blade basically, some of you might have... Um, the adjuster that's stuck or seized and you might want to take that apart so they have these weird uh, little clips that as you would expect they clip into place but they do have like a little groove there in the clip so the clip isn't fully um, doesn't have the same thickness in all areas around it certain areas are a little bit thinner so you can get your screwdriver in there or whatever you want to use and lever that off Hopefully you can see there's a little gap that's happened now, two little gaps that you can see. If you had a little set of long nose pliers you could just grab that on there, get rid of that. So there you go, there's your, there's your clip. And what that means is that you can unscrew this now all the way and remove it. And that clip just stops it kind of backing out too far. So there's that. Um, it means you can pull your little plate out as well. And then there's 
is your kind of next part. And then if you wanted to, you can clean all that up, make sure there's no debris in there, and then put that together, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to apply a little bit of grease onto here. Just be aware that when you do put grease on brakes, um, the likelihood is that the grease will get covered in dirt at some point. So I'll try and use it sparingly. So yeah, I'm going to clean this up and then we'll put it back together. I've kind of uh, cleaned the parts up. Not massively clean, but they're alright. And I have stuck a little bit of grease on here. I just wanted to stick a bit more on. So it's like a mobile grease. I'm sure if you've taken bike parts uh, apart before, you've probably seen this blue grease. So yeah, it's called uh, XHP by Mobile. I think that's what a lot of people use. So that's what I use. It seems recommended. Um, and with this, you basically have the little lip that goes in first, like so, and then that all lines up. And then you have your plate, which drops through there. And then that's pretty much kind of a basic rebuild on there. And then we're just going to thread that in, try not to cross thread it. And obviously if you have like a issue, you can clean that up. Hopefully you can get it out, maybe you can re-tap it. Or you could just find a bolt that fits in there. Um, that's the same thread. Maybe you put helicoil repair, you could do whatever you wanted really. As long as that it's long enough to protrude through and it pushes on the lever, then it will just adjust the lever like that. And then we've got the little clip, which I'm going to get a set of circ uh, not circular pliers, long nose pliers to push this back on. They can be uh, quite hard push back on. I'm just going to grab that there and then it just goes right at the top of the bolt. There's a little groove on there. And that one's <laughs> really quite easy. And then just click that into place. There we go. And then that's your uh, tallest reach adjuster done. And then we're going to get back onto the master cylinder um, and get on with that. So for this part, what we have done, we've cleaned all in here. Um, you can see it's nice and shiny. I couldn't really see any scratches. It's still like bits of dirt, so you just got to be careful that it doesn't drop in there. I'm going to drop our spring in first. And then we're going to get our piston. And it's quite easy because that kind of dipped area there is facing out because the plunger needs to sit on there. If you wanted to, you could put mineral oil on the seals before you push them in. But these seals, they don't look like they're swollen and they seem to move quite happily and then what we're going to need is this plate and this lever as well so these two items and if I show you now that's going to sit in the brake like that downwards and then ultimately that's going to sit in there is that right there we go it sits like that inside the brake so if we can show that and then you want this area here so what you hopefully can see is that's like a circular. So that actual bit there is cut out to match the profile of the piston. And that's going to push on the piston. And then there's a little kind of tab underneath that you've probably seen. If you looked at the bottom of these brakes before, it sticks out of the bottom. This bit's a little tricky because the piston's in the way at the same time. And one thing I'd like to do is just, if I can find it, there we go. Let's just stick a little bit of grease on here just to try and hold that thing in place, otherwise it's just gonna slip out all the time. So it's hopefully just gonna hold that a little bit better, and make my life a little bit easier. So we're gonna use a prodder to push on the piston. Oh, the other thing is, before we do all this, you wanna back this screw out, because it will just make your life easier. This little three stroke screw with a weird end on it. I don't know what the size is for the thread, it might be like an M4. So we just back that out, otherwise it's protruding through and it's getting in the way. And then you can see under there there's, there's no screw sticking out. So yeah, let's try this, probably the most awkward part I'd imagine. So I'm just going to pop that down there. And then we're going to line, chuck this into there. to do is get that little metal piece into the hole underneath there's a little hole down here we need the bottom tab bit to get into there otherwise it's no 
not going to work. I'd imagine there's an easier way, but we just try and get these plastic guides just to sit in the hole a little bit. Just so they're kind of held in place. Yeah, that piston's a pain in the backside. There we go, it doesn't look too bad. I don't want to leave or anything and break it. I don't really need this one in. It's kind of at a weird angle. There we go. So we're going to leave that like that. We don't want to push anything down and just try and align this up a bit better. Almost there. Just fighting against that piston a little bit. And just have a little check. You can see on this side, not quite lined up yet. I'm just going to push this down a bit. And what's happened is because it's gone in at an angle, it doesn't want to sit flush at the moment. This bit's not too bad. Let me take some of that pressure off. Just trying to squeeze that in there. So that wants to come forward into that gap. There we go. So you can see that now actually sitting in the little curvature and we just got to get this end in so we might have to lever this bit up a little bit just to try and flatten that down a bit there we go I'm just going to pop that to there and then that one and hopefully we will be able to show the free stroke thing that nobody really cares about or uses anyway but um this is kind of what the video is about, just showing how things work and then hopefully it's easier to understand. So as we screw this in, I'm guessing it's going to miss. Yeah, so we might just have to push on that a little bit and then... What a stupid screw. I think they put this in there just so you had to buy the XT version, <laughs> just to get the Philips version. There we go. So you can hopefully see how this mechanism works. And as you tighten that, it's just going to push on the piston a bit. So yeah, I'm just going to pop that all the way through. Probably not, because this screw's pain in the backside. No, I'll just leave it. Put a little bugger. Hopefully it doesn't get in the way there. But yeah, there's your system. And then what we are going to do is we're going to get the other plastic plate. I mean, you could run a bit of grease on here. Because you've ultimately got this roller ball kind of ends going on here. Which are these bits. So they kind of sit in there. Um, but yeah, like I said, the more grease you have, the more likely stuff's just going to get stuck to it. So... pros and cons. Oh, these actually have, I didn't didn't realise they're like little rubber ends. I was just cleaning it and one fell off. So they're actually little rubber ends and that just, that will just push in and out. That will just come out and the little uh, roller bearing probably just fall out then. So yeah, we'll leave that alone. So that's that. We are going to install this little plate here, which is going to be that way around, like so. And then what you've got to do with this is essentially just turn it 90 degrees if you can. So pop that into there. Make sure it's the right way around though. Otherwise you never get it. So we're going to pop that in sideways. Grab a pair of pliers. And zoom out. There we go. Not 
the best bit to grab. But just try, to, try not to destroy the whole thing. I don't want to ruin the bearing or put like a dent in it or anything. Oh no, we lost a little rubber thing. There he is. Get the bugger. Things coming apart. See, I put a little scratch there, which I'm not too happy about. I don't know if there's anywhere else really to grab it. Get on with it. So we're going to pop that down there. Make sure you're in the right kind of ballpark area. There we go. And, that's, and that's your cam system sorted. And that's what that whole thing looks like. So what we'll do now is we'll get onto sorting out the lever blade and then putting like this uh, part on as well. We're just going to sit on there and uh, do something. So yeah, we'll get onto that next. Yeah, so basically this part is what I call a nightmare. Um, you have this, you have this, and this spring, and then this pivot. And that's all got to line up and then go into this master cylinder through these two holes tried to kind of grease everything to try and make it easier um, so yeah this is probably attempt number five or six the other thing is you want to unscrew this right here and that will give us more space for this to move and then we're going to put this spring here we can get a little close up of that you can see how that orientates there and you can see there's a bit of area there that's worn away where that spring's been sitting on there, so that's it's like that. And now what we have to do is try and push this piston forward, which is pretty difficult on this brake because it's very strong the piston, and then keep the spring in the right place as well. And try and keep it in shot, which would be helpful. Right, so I'm going to get the little podger first and try to align that up. And I'm guessing that we missed the spring. No, no, we've got the spring. But the spring's gone a little bit underneath, so we're going to have to try and pull that out if we can. There we go. And then what I'm going to try and do is use this podger now. But we can zoom in anyway, and you can see that spring system just basically pushes back on the lever. We're not going to have... Uh, it's not going to be solid now because we've got this undone, so it's always going to flop around. But if we can get this other podger in here, it would be pretty good. Give us a fighting chance anyway. Mm, it just doesn't doesn't line up at all. I mean, that's miles off. Just trying to line that a bit better. So we've got the spring and the first part of the lever, but the middle part's gone miles away. There we go. And then we've got most of that through with a fatter podger. So hopefully. By any miracle, you can get this through, and it might be worth if your one's a little bit rough. Just giving it a light sand, something not too harsh. I just don't want to remove too much metal and change dime out because it will affect the lever. But yeah, wish me luck on this. Oh, and this is um five point, well it's five mil, so it's four point nine mil. This little thing all the way along, so it's not tapered or anything. Once we come to this first part, we're already struggling with the alignment. There we go, we got that bit through. And we got the middle through. Give it a little kind of wabble, wiggle it a bit.
pushing the wrong way. What's happening here? I don't want to lose the spring. There we go. And there we go. Oh, that was very difficult. And then if you want to, just want to get that nice and flush. Put it on there. A bit of wood. Just because I don't want to damage the master cylinder too much. system once we apply a bit of that we've got a lever that's not flopping around nice and smooth let me just show how that's all working in there and then if you wanted to just adjust that free stroke um, because that could affect your bleeding if that's in so when you bleed the brakes, I think it's better to unscrew that. I'm not too sure, but I would do that if it was a hope brakes, just so the piston's got kind of more free movement. Um, and I guess the rest is pretty easy from here. We're just going to get these gubbins. I might want to try and straighten that up a little bit. So the first thing is this, which is your little rubber diaphragm. We push that around the little circle edges, otherwise it might not seat properly. And then we have this little plastic insert that goes there. And then we have this aluminium plate, which I believe probably went on that way. It's, I don't know, just looks a bit more finished on this side. And then we need a little nylon washer. So this thing has a little tab on it. It's got like a little lip on there, and what happens is that little lip sits into that little hole there. So that goes on there. There we go. And then we get our little T10 Torx. Put that screw into there. Just nip that up, it doesn't have to be crazy tight on there. And then all this does up via uh, this system. And then we get another T10. And we'll do this end up. Same thing again, just don't go crazy with it. Just nip it up. The diaphragm or any rubber seals that are there should do the work. Um, and then we've got this, which I don't have the rubber O-ring. But you should have a little rubber O-ring for yours. Um, you can place it in the hole and then put the screw on. But I find it's better if you put it on the screw. I did try it last time with the rubber ring in the hole first, and you don't want to tighten this much either. It's a 2mm on there, 2mm Allen key, and this, this one's too small as well. Same thing, just nip it up. I literally just got that tiniest amount. Um, and then you've got your little grub screw on the side. And I think my battery is going to die again. And I forgot what it scrub screws. It's a little Allen key, this one probably. No. A little baby one here. I think that's going to screw into there. And then just tighten that onto the pivot. And my battery's waiting to die. And then what do we have? A little rubber thing. From it sits in there. Quickly get that in there, and there's your uh, Shimano lever. 